We're back. <laughs> this is Monterey on tonight. I'm Gary Morris. We're here every Sunday night from 6 to 9 p.m. We play concert music like J-Lo tonight, and we have guests like this gentleman sitting next to me right now. And I want to introduce you to the man who has the website now called nine roundabouts.com this is dwight stump welcome Dwight. thank you gary thank Good you so here. much for being here and what a story <laughs> this man has to help us here on the monterey peninsula with 200 million dollars that these folks want to spend mm -hmm. to put nine roundabouts on highway 68 mm -hmm. and this man is saying no mm -hmm. Let's not do that. There's a better way to do it, and that's why Dwight's here tonight on the show. Now, those of you that are watching over in Fresno, you don't care about this, so, you know, <laughs> go do something else. But those of you that live here, this is a very important topic to discuss. Dwight, what started all of this? Well, back back in July, I got a postcard, okay. and uh, it told me about a uh, public event that uh, TAMSI, the you know uh, transportation agency from Monterey County and Caltrans, were putting together to get the public more involved with this proposed roundabout thing. And so I went to that, and I started looking at what uh, TAMSI had as their quote fact sheet. And the fact sheet just seemed very suspicious. And I, I have a background in marketing and sales, and I looked at the promotional part of it, and it just seemed like too good to be true. There was everything that roundabouts would do, and it was like a miracle cure for everything. Congestion, uh -huh. uh, wildlife preservation, everything. And so when I started questioning it and looking at the details at this meeting, then it kind of started to unravel. And uh, one of the big ones, was the claim that nine roundabouts in eight miles of Highway 68 was going to reduce emergency response time, like get things faster through nine roundabouts. And I'm going, that's just not possible. So at the meeting, I happened to run into a fireman who turned out to be the fire chief for Monterey County, the regional okay. fire department. Okay. So, and I talked to him and he said, no, that's, that's not factual, that's just, that's just false. Mm -hmm. So when we started to look at that and, and look at some of the other claims, we saw that it was just not being truthful. And so that's when I got involved. I'm going, you know, public looks to uh, the agencies, government agencies, particularly ones who are supposed to have trained engineers, and they look to them as the purveyors of truth uh -huh. and experience and that they wouldn't question anything that they said and yet they were saying these things that were just absolutely false. So, so I started on that, and that's kind of led me you know, further you down are the, the road. You are the uh, crusader now. <laughs> oh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for better or for worse. For better or for worse, <laughs> you're the crusader. But mm -hmm. why would you want to put nine roundabouts in eight miles mm -hmm. across Highway 68? What do they think that they're going to be able to achieve mm -hmm. doing that? Well, they had about nine or ten points in their, quote, fact sheet. Yeah. Uh, one was, one of the major ones that they uh, point to is congestion reduction. So that was when they did surveys clear back in 19, or I mean 2016. Okay. That the public was looking at trying to improve the congestion that happens during peak commute right. times, yeah. which is, you know, two hours in the a.m., two hours in the p.m. Right. And so they thought, well, nine roundabouts will reduce congestion. So that was one of their claims and one of the big you know, responses to the public outcry of let's get something done. Yeah. So they were doing that. They also said that it would uh, decrease emissions from vehicles when, in fact, it doesn't. It actually increases it. So they said that it would help protect the wildlife, and they were going to also put wildlife crossings in 68. And I thought, well, that's interesting, but the wildlife crossings have nothing to do with the roundabouts. Right. So they were kind of saying, well, roundabouts will help save wildlife and, and all that, when they really didn't have anything to do with Nothing to do with it. Right. And it was just totally separate, which they could do separately. So then they said, well, it's a, a safety issue. And so the safety issue was one that they said, well, roundabouts, and, and it's true, will reduce the amount of T-bone accidents mm -hmm. in an intersection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it won't reduce rear end 
It won't reduce, you know, through the, the main uh, sections between the intersections. Mm -hmm. And then when you look back at how many intersections had experienced T-bone type collisions over the last, since 2013, nothing. Huh. And so it's trying to fix a problem that didn't exist. So the safety, emission reduction, emergency response reduction, uh, wildlife preservation, all of this, they were promoting as this is going to help. And it's only going to cost $200 million. Only going to cost, I love that. Only. only going to cost $200 million. Right. Like it's nothing. Of taxpayer money. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. And, and they have, you know, Measure X that I learned, you know, had uh, increased the sales tax locally. So it had uh, put money into it. And so they were going to use part of that money. And then they're going to get matching funds from the state, match roll, mat, uh, matching federal funds. So it was like, hey, let's use this money that's available to us now and promote it as, you know, helping reduce congestion, safety issues, and that kind of thing. When, so, these, when these things start, who starts them? That's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> you, it's hard to uncover how it actually began. But there's been a promotion in the U.S. a little bit recently for roundabouts. And so I, I went to Caltrans and asked them that question. Okay. How, did they, how, did they, how did you get this? Yeah. And it turned out that the legislature had passed and, and Caltrans had accepted that any time you try to improve an intersection, roundabouts had to be included as a possible uh -huh. uh, an alternative. Throw to it in there. there. And actually, it was given preferential treatment. So it's like, can, you know, consider roundabouts first. And then you can look at other things, but roundabouts is one of the main things that you're wanting to look at. So that was why roundabouts, I think, got in the picture. And, and we know that there's congestion during the peak hours. So sure. that's, that's, but during the non-peak hours, there really isn't that much of a problem on 68. You know, I live next to it and you're travel it all by. the time. Yeah, you're, I live in Corral de Tierra, so, okay, so I'm, I'm on 68 a lot. Okay. And so other than the four hours a day, you know, it's, it's pretty clear. Two hours clear. in the morning. Yeah. Two hours in the afternoon. Exactly. Commute so, time. Commute time. Commute time. Yeah. So, so I, I just tried to look at it, and then they they started voting on it with the board of the the TMC board, and they thought, well, roundabouts, you know, look like a good option because okay. of all of these things that were sold okay. to them. Right. And so when you looked at all of their, um, you know, positive, untrue but positive mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, gee, why not? Now, you have something in the paperwork you brought tonight mm -hmm. that said that a lot of the congestion problems can be solved now with this AI. I know. Isn't that, yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> tell, me about, tell me about how we can fix this problem without having to put the nine roundabouts in using mm -hmm. AI. How do we do that, Dwight? Well, when, when I got involved with it and I did some Google research on uh, adaptive signaling, because that came up in the conversation on one of the things they had kind of looked at but didn't really consider, and I did some Googling and it turned out that AI had started to be used in actual applications in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, even back to 2012. And that it was a new application from Carnegie Mellon University that this professor from in the robotics department had started using it in few intersections in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And they go, wow, this is great. Look at the results. So they started from a few to 20 to 30. And pretty soon it had a huge improvement in the congestion in a major area in Pittsburgh. Using the computer. So, exactly. And so they started using it. And then a, it turned out that a company came up at, in part of this search that had actually purchased the rights to it, gotten the technology, and it was a major multi-million dollar company worldwide called Myovision. And so the more I researched, I thought, well, why can't we use this to reduce congestion because... Highway 68. Yeah, and it's like, and when I asked them, okay, so your research, and there were a number of case studies that showed that it could be 25 to 40% improvement. Wow. And the... We're supposed to improve this, even according to TAMC, only five minutes in the peak commute time in the afternoon. So instead of a 36 minute commute, you would have a 31-minute commute, but and it would only cost you 200 million. 
And that's just on those two right. hours. It's like, I mean, this was crazy. Dwight, so. here's the question. Now, here's the question. How much is AI going to cost? Well, that was that was the question I asked Milevision. So I said, hey, you know, it's not an actual bid, but I gave them the, the kind of controllers that were at. I was able to get Caltrans to give me the controller types at each intersection and, you know, gave them some pictures and all of that. And they came up with a quote of about 440000 Oh, my To put all goodness. of it in top notch absolutely all the cameras and they didn't have to even stop the traffic to put it in because they could use existing intersections existing signals and it was software adaptation and it would give you better <laughs> congestion reduction for less than half a million versus 200 million oh my and it was like goodness. hello let's wake up and they hadn't considered this at all even though it had been you know open to the public i, mean, I googled it you know, since 2012. And these engineers didn't even consider it. I'm going, what? why not? What were why? they smoking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was just a little crazy that yeah. these trained professionals looking to use the public's money for doing the very best for the public didn't even discover this stuff. Can you imagine? And I, I as soon as you started talking about this, the construction that would be going on <laughs> To put in these roundabouts, what's going to happen to the traffic when they're yeah. working on the road putting in the roundabouts? Well, one, Caltrans doesn't want to talk about it because it's going to be horrendous. They actually have to purchase more land than the roundabouts is going to be there because they have to have a bigger you know, pass around it while they're constructing it. Yes. And it's going to take them a few years to do each one of them. So oh. we're talking about a number of years to put these in, best case... And, of course, government you know, installations always last longer than sure. predicted. Yeah. So, yeah, it would be a huge, I mean, it would be almost stoppage along 68. So now where are we today? Is this going to mm -hmm. come up for a vote? Are they going to in increase the, mm -hmm. the gas tax? Uh, are they going to increase now. the sales tax? Uh, <laughs> how are they going to fund this? And has anyone approached the powers that be mm -hmm. with the AI process? Possibility. Right. Well, when I, as soon as I discovered it, I would pass it by, you know, Doug uh, Bilsey at Tamsey and also the uh, Carla Yu at Caltrans and put all this material by them as I was getting it to make sure I was looking at it properly. And so they knew about it. And then I wrote a 14-page document and sent it to the 17 members of the TAMC board. That was back in December. Okay, 2023. Yeah, 2023, yeah. And so they maybe looked at it. They each got a copy. They said they got a copy because they're the ones that really vote from a funding standpoint. Caltrans is going to make a recommendation for it as well, right. but they're evaluating it still. But the push so far is still for the roundabouts. So I did that, stood up and did my little three-minute talk in front of the board, gave them the 14-page document, and we're you know moving to at least get some interest. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, the big encouraging thing is I was able at some of these public meetings to talk to Caltrans senior engineer and was actually in uh, December able to put together a Zoom meeting between Myovision, the, the AI company, that builds company the AI right, stuff. and yeah. Caltrans and TAMC engineers. And so we had slated a hour Zoom meeting and it actually lasted two hours. There was oh, so wow. much interest in that. Wow, wow. So they're looking at possibly a pilot study. There's some things they have to work through, but it's opening the eyes, I think, of a lot of people yeah. when they're saying this is a this is an excellent uh, use for AI and all of its, you know, individual uh, technology breakthroughs that it's had. And let's let's try it. And they could yeah. put that in and see how it works. If it doesn't work, yeah. then they could go back to spending $200 million on their, their round of I'm points. with you. I think, and you know what? What you're saying makes so much sense to me mm -hmm. because I've seen good uh, use of uh, computers mm -hmm. in traffic where you and I may be sitting at a, a stoplight and you're wondering, why am I just sitting here? There's no cross traffic. Exactly. But if the computer knows you're sitting there and there's nobody else, it turns the light on so you can exactly. go. Exactly. It makes perfect sense. I mean, to me, it's like having an electronic traffic cop 
that's up on this big pedestal that can see for a long distance always and see what, what needs to be done with the signal depending on the actual real-time yes. situation yeah. rather than some program that has a certain number of seconds that it cycles through every minute, you know, and it goes there no matter what. So, yeah, yeah it adapts so much better. Well, you are on to something big time. Well, I, I hope, so. well, I hope other I people hope, know about it, too. I hope tonight that the fact that you are here on television, on our station, and also uh, enlightening folks over in the Fresno market, because we're on in Fresno as well, which mm -hmm. is a much bigger market than Monterey, that maybe AI is the answer for traffic congestion. Yeah. Well, it certainly is a answer, and in this kind of situation, I think by it far the so best. Much, yeah, it yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah. It's, it's just, to me, logical. Thank you so much for being here. Well, you're welcome. Tonight. Thanks for I, having me, I, and I, I really, really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. We've enlightened some mm -hmm. folks out there, and you know what's interesting now, Dwight, is because we are now repeating these shows, it's not like you just made one appearance tonight, mm -hmm. and that's it. You're going to be seen over and over and over. And not only here in Monterey, streaming live on the Internet, on our local channel, looping, we call it, but in Fresno as well. well that's, so that's I hope great. we draw a lot of attention to this. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for being here. Yeah. And there it is. Okay. Nine roundabouts versus artificial intelligence traffic signals. Okay. And that's what's the website once again? Nineroundabouts.com. Okay, folks, if you need to know anything about it, go to that website. And thanks again, Dwight. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Okay, we're going to get back to more entertainment okay. now. This is J-Lo on Monterey on Tonight.